After all the basic materials and the approximate action plan has been prepared, the construction process can begin. First, you need to clear the site of future construction from various debris. A large birch fell on the place where we were going to build a bathhouse just a month ago. The fact that it fell is certainly bad. But it's good that it fell before we started building and did not damage anything. We got off with only a crumpled fence. In order to level the platform for the foundation, it was decided to bring the additional soil to the site. Of course, we could simply redistribute the soil that already exists. But then the difference in levels would have to be compensated for by different lengths of piles, and metal is more expensive than soil. To temp freshly poured soil, you need a simple tool that can be assembled in a couple of minutes. You will need a piece of timber, a branch for the handle, and a couple of long nails. Thanks to the additional land, we also have the opportunity to add the level of the well, so that the water from the surface does not flow under it, and in winter the water in it does not freeze. Leveling the site does not require a lot of intelligence, just a lot of physical labor. Of course, if you don't have an excavator at hand. You need to do this in layers. Pour a layer of soil about 10 cm thick, tamp it, another 10, tamp it again, I guarantee you that your shoulders and back will beg for mercy at the end of the day. When you are satisfied with the result, you can start surveying. That means marking the dimensions of the future building on the site. In our case, the dimensions are dictated by the available timber, 4.4 and 3.3 meters. This will be the size of our main log house, plus a small veranda 1.5 meters wide, enough to fit a supply of firewood and a small sofa. There are different options for a foundation. You can cast the entire area with concrete or just the sections under the walls. You can put brick cubes at the corners of the log house. Screw piles can be screwed into the ground to a depth of a couple of meters. But we decided to be original and use wood at hand. Digging through the scrap metal dump, we found pipes, profiles and reinforced slabs, which were given to us for almost nothing, and decided to make a metal frame on piles and concrete. <laughs> you will see everything. First, I split the reinforced slabs into squares and patched the pile hole in the center. To cut the reinforcement inside the slabs, we bought the hefty grinder from our friends. In this form, the slabs could already be transported quite comfortably. Then we made homemade piles by dividing the pipes into sections of 1.6 meters. It was necessary to build reinforcement to them, so that the concrete had something to cling to. Neither my friend or I ever used welding for anything serious up to this point. But we had theoretical understanding, advice from our friends and enthusiasm. So we borrowed the welding machine and started trying. At first, curses poured from our mouth like New Year's snow. But gradually we get better, and after a dozen electrodes spent on training, our ugly weather temperature did not come off, even if you pound on it with a hammer. I consider this a success. Speaking of pounding, we put these piles in the previously dark holes, pounding them with all our might. Now it's up to the concrete. For such a rough task we need cement, one part, in this case half a bucket, as much water is needed to mix the required consistency, and six parts of sand with gravel. The order in which the components are mixed is not that important, but it is more convenient to first mix the cement with water, and then gradually add sand with the rest of the water. You can use the regular hole to make string easier on your spine. We fill the dugout space around the pile with the resulting mixer to increase the contact area. Put the slabs on top, and weld the better part of its reinforcement to our pile. In this design, the pile will prevent the movement of our foundation in the horizontal direction and the slab in the vertical. And just to protect the metal from corrosion, I seal the whole thing with an extra bucket of concrete. 
In total we got 6 piles under the main walls, 1 pile in the center of the future brick wall, and 3 piles for the veranda, in which I did not even use slabs. The weight there will be very small, but a heavy stove must be placed on a more solid foundation. For it I decided to cast a separate platform, but on the same slab with one of the piles, so that the whole structure would still work together. To cast such a box you need to put together a wooden frame. To save cement, larger stones or even pieces of other concrete can be added to the motor for the platform, because it will only be subjected to compressive stress. We have a lot of them after the slab separation process. After a few days the mold can be removed, but you can't put the stuff on it yet. The concrete is gaining its full strength only after a month. Do not worry, you will have a lot of things to do during this time. The main thing is not to forget to drag the stove before you start building walls, otherwise you will have to dig the trench under them. The next step is to cut off our piles exactly at a level. To do this you can use an ordinary water level with a bubble, or borrow a laser one from someone. To use it it is better to wait until dark. When the sun is bright the marks are hardly noticeable. Almost everything was in level except for the far left pile, on which a small chunk has to be added. Everything else was with the margin. Now metal frame, which is probably way too much for our purposes. But uh, in my life I've seen enough of old houses driving down the slope to have a completely understandable desire to play it safe. We cut off the edges exactly along the ruler to make it easier to weld the joints and set them along the line using the same laser level. If you don't want the halves to bend from temperature, you first need to fix the corners with small points and only after that lay the solid line. A couple of tries and I started getting pretty decent welds. Well, I almost forgot, until everything is built up you need to put a barrel into the ground so that the water from the washing room can drain there, so the underground will always be dry. You need to make holes in a barrel, and after you insert it into the ground, sprinkle it around with sand. Then the water from it will seep into the ground and drain by itself. Behind me, you can already see the stove standing on its rightful place. Let me explain. Somewhere around this time, in the process of finishing the frame, we realized that it is time to put the stove on the pedestal but it was unrealistic to do with two people. I don't have the footage of the process itself because it's happened so spontaneously. Uh, late one evening a neighbor, a veteran of the Afghan war, came to us with a bottle of brandy to celebrate the Unborn Forces Day. And word for word he said, guys, you talk too much, let's just go and do it. After drinking another glass we put on our boots and dragged it onto the pedestal. For a drunken one I see is knee deep. Later of course we still had to put it in the correct position and slightly erase it so that the firebox is above the floor level. But that was already much easier. I decided to put the stove on metal legs so that the heat from the firebox would not go into the concrete. I made a gate so that after the firewood burns out it is possible to block the outflow of heat to the street through the pipe. But the pipe must not be shut off during combustion, otherwise the reaction will begin to take oxygen from the room and replace it with carbon dioxide and after some time you will find yourself pretty dead. And I also made an additional pipe from the water tank, coming out from the side of the washing room to draw hot water without having to go into the steam room every time. The finished metal frame must be cleaned of dust and dirt and covered with a protective compound. We will use bitumen. In order for the molten bitumen to retain its liquid form longer, and you will need this because it solidifies very quickly, you must mix it with the kerosene or gasoline. But be careful, this is an extremely flammable mixture. It is necessary to cover the metal with a thick continuous layer, so that the water does not have a chance to get under it and begin the corrosion process. Pay special attention to fresh welds. Done correctly, we'll have a durable and flexible hydrophobic coating. In next video, we'll be building walls and roof. Stay in touch.